Good morning. This morning at Amazing Grace, we have canceled worship because of the roads. On my way here, it was pretty slick. Nothing had been plowed yet. And so for your safety, as well as the safety of other people on the road, we are not gathering together today. But that doesn't mean that you don't worship. We've put together a little mini worship service on this video for you. So gather your family around and watch and participate. Down below, I have linked two hymns to begin and end worship. And so right now, what I'd like you to do is pause this video, go down and click the first song, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. Go ahead, sing along with it, or simply watch and concentrate on the words. And once the song is done, come on back to this video and press play again. Press pause now. Welcome back. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a lesson from Luke chapter 3. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering if, in their hearts if John the baptizer might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And, he was, and as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is God's word. Where in the world is God, huh? The world is a mess. My life is a mess. And my guess is that if you're honest about your life, you'll admit that it's a mess too. Maybe it's something like mine. Maybe it's something like depression. Maybe it's something very different. Maybe it's financial or a relationship mess. Where in the world is God? Doesn't it feel like sometimes he's come down to this world, looked around at all the messes and said, this ain't worth my time, and he left? And sometimes I think that's a good thing. Sometimes I think it's good that I can't see God because what would he say to me? You're a mess. You're not worth my time. You're not good enough. I'm going to come and I'm going to get the good people over here and I'm going to get everyone else over there and you're part of the everybody else. You, you're, you're gone. You're like chaff that's just tossed out. See, that's my fear. Where in the world is God? He's gone because he just doesn't think I'm worth it. But in what you just heard, you heard that Jesus did something very different. Jesus came, the word became flesh, and he dwelt among us. That baby that was born at Christmas grew up, and he was baptized. Now here's the interesting thing about that. Baptism washes a sinful heart. I, First Peter says very bluntly, baptism now saves you. But Jesus didn't need to be saved. But he did this for you. See, what he did in baptism was he joined our team. He said, I belong here in the mess with you. And when he had done that, when he came out of the water, heaven ripped open and the Holy Spirit came down physically and landed on top of Jesus. And God the Father thundered, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Can you imagine, can you imagine getting that kind of approval? That kind of approval from God himself? You don't have to imagine. Where in the world is God? Baptizing you. 
Seeing baptism, that's not something we do for God. It's something that God does for us. In baptism, God joins us to his team. So Jesus joined our team and we joined his team. And now we belong together. And whatever Jesus wins, we get to win too. In baptism, we're washed clean. In baptism, he looks at us and all our mess and God says, you. I want you in my family, and I will pay any price. And that's what Jesus did. When he went to the cross and died for us, he paid for us, messes that we are. We are washed clean. We are made part of his family. We are changed. See, now God looks at you, and that same approval he gave to Jesus, he gives to you. He looks at you and says, you are my child. I, I love you. I'm, I'm pleased with you. And he says that about us. Now that is stunning to me. That is amazing. And it changes us. See, the book of Romans says that in baptism, we are buried with Christ. We're buried with him in his death. And that means we're united with him in his resurrection. Baptism is also a guarantee that you will rise again. That God cares so much about you that he said, this world is not enough for you. I give you heaven. And when we rise with him after baptism, we are made new. We're not what we were before. We are different. And so you rejoice. Where in the world is God? He's not ashamed of you. He's not run away and abandoned you. In baptism, he has made you his own and says, you are mine. Amen. Now, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be and abide with you all. Amen. To close off worship, go ahead, go down and click that second hymn link that goes to In Christ Alone. There are no words projected on the screen, so if you happen to know the words, go ahead, sing along. But otherwise, just sit back, relax, and use that as your confession that Jesus has saved you, and in Christ alone, you are his. Amen. <laughs>